Okay, so this is uh, our project. It follows on from the previous project that was funded by the Bell Foundation as well, which uh, finished two years ago, which was also a case study looking at two schools, one primary and one uh, secondary in the region. What we came up with there was this, this uh, model, this conceptual model uh, emerged, which was, as Diana said, this triangle of the relationship between language development, so, uh, academic achievement, and social integration, but within a more, the holistic context, school context, of uh, processes and systems of information, information about the background of, of, of the children themselves, but also information generated within the schools in terms of assessment on a regular basis, coordination of uh, support and so on within the school, coordination through policies, whether written or implied policies on a range of issues such as uh, language use and so on, EAL policies, and then communication within the school, communication between different uh, uh, categories of staff within schools, uh, communication between parents and, 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 and schools, and of course support for the EL kids. So we use that as a starting point, as a conceptual starting point, but we wanted to look for this project in slightly closer detail and in, in to investigate three, these three areas. The one area was from the pupils' perspectives, the connections between uh, social integration, language development, and, and achievement. Uh, the other was to look at strategies, the teacher strategies, uh, and the other was uh, parental engagement in the schools. Um, the data, data was based on, on the one hand, we started off with a regional online survey of uh, schools, secondary schools in uh, the eastern region. So our project was based on the eastern region as the context. This is the second largest geographical region in England, um, very diverse as well, with a growing po uh, and diverse population of EAL uh, uh, children in schools and an uneven spread. Anyway, so that's the, con the context. So we started off with, with, with a, a regional uh, survey which uh, only got 46 uh, f uh, full r uh, responses to it, so we're not making any wild generalizations on the basis of that evidence. And the main data was based on two schools, two secondary uh, state schools um, in the region, uh, and we, did, uh, we focused in particular on 22 uh, recently arrived EAL kids at those schools, and we followed them over two years. Uh, we interviewed, as well as you can see there, a number of uh, 70, we did a total of about 70 interviews. Uh, <coughs> and we did um, a survey of all the Key Stage 4 kids at the two schools, so there was about 400 were completed. We did a survey of EL parents or parents of EL uh, children at the schools, 61 of those were completed, and we did some language tests, um, or a, a written test of those 20, uh, 22, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and um, we interviewed the kids and we analyzed the interviews from the point of view of content, but also from the point of view of, of language. But firstly, um, one or two things about the regional slides, as you can see there, 90% uh, uh, newly arrived were, uh, uh, students were assessed um, on admission. Only 24% of the respondents had received uh, information on those children from their schools of origin from abroad. Three quarters of the schools did the assessment in English only, uh, the initial assessment. A quarter of them did them in English and in the L1. Uh, the, the, what was assessed was on the whole English. 82% uh, uh, of the schools also assessed maths, and then the other bits were less frequent. Um, <coughs> okay, uh, rather surprisingly, only 53% of the respondent schools actually ran an induction program for the newly arrived kids in their schools, which is uh, you know, arguably rather worrying. Um, and these were the kinds of uh, activities that took place in the uh, induction.